Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're in the best of health. I hope you're drinking water and minding your business, all right? If you're new to this channel, my name is Any Any Paul, and it's so very nice to meet you. I make content on student advice, medicine, lifestyle, and natural hair. If you're returning, thank you so very much, you guys. You guys are the OGs of this channel, and literally, I am super duper grateful for you. In today's video, we're just going to be talking about how crash courses or what crash courses will do for you if you are sitting for the MDCN exams. Most especially for people who are new, people who have not written these exams before, or people who've written the exams before and decided to take it again because they didn't pass it the first time or times they sat for it. Do you understand? So yeah. <laughs> So the first thing that I want you to note is when you register for a crash course, a crash course for MDCN is not the solution to all your problems, okay? But it could help you. It actually could help you. Now, let me explain what I'm trying to say. You register for a crash course and you believe that somehow that crash course will be the answer to all your problems, will teach you everything you need to know, will refresh your memory for the exam without maybe having a prior experience in the hospital or without maybe revising on your own now that's going to be very <laughs> super difficult so one of the first things i want you to note if maybe you're watching me and you've already registered for a crash course or you plan to register when it's your time i highly advise that you have an already existing study plan and an already existing study partner why i'm saying that is because it's to create a system of you already repeating or refreshing things you've already learned in medical school and then when you get into the crash course you can relearn them or you can relearn them in the nigerian way i hope i'm making sense now the next thing to note is that most of the crash courses that you're going to be joining um will have strong points so you want to look out for the strong points in the crash course that you're joining now they are a lot of tutorials as at the time of making this video only very few that i can recommend and i've shared the tutorials i use myself in other videos if that's something you want to see please check the description box all right but yeah um look for the strengths of your crash course how how do i mean you speak to people already in that tutorial and you ask okay what is tutorial xyz's strength what are they good in you want to know if their strength matches your strength or if their strength matches your weakness now the best things or the best match for you is to find a tutorial that their strength matches your weakness what do i mean by this i mean for example if i'm not good with oskies i want to find a tutorial that their strength is in oskies and then join that so that during their crash course when they are pumping a lot of knowledge i can quickly grab the things i need you know keep them at my fingertips and then take that new knowledge into the exam hall okay and another thing that this will do for you is it will give you an opportunity to flex your muscles so you find new people to teach if for example a topic comes up or something that you already knew before you joined the tutorial the next thing to keep in mind is that most of the crash courses are usually cheaper than joining for the whole tutorial but they are not usually the best way out so if you already had months to prepare for this exam and your plan is to just come and join a crash course I highly advise that you don't. Most of the people who join crash courses are people who maybe just came into the country, people who have been studying from when they were outside or, you know, in school, and then they just graduated and they're like, okay, let's quickly give this a go, you know? So I highly advise that if you can, please don't plan for a crash course. Plan for a proper tutorial so you can get like the most out of it and then if there's a crash course you're eyeing another tutorial that has a strength that is on your weakness list if you can afford it by all means please join all right another thing about crash courses is because it is called a crash course for a reason that means everything is going to be coming at you literally like boom 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 <laughs> okay so that means everything is going to be literally slapped in your face so you have to be prepared mentally emotionally and physically prepared to receive that volume of information that means that if you're joining a crash course you should be ready apart from the financial implications of this or the time you should be able to sleep enough to retain a lot of the things that you're learning okay now that means if you're not sleeping enough if you're not eating properly 
so just so that you're in a state to you're in your most you need to be in your most absorbent state at the time when you join a crash course because there's going to be a lot of material and there's not going to be a lot of time to revise so this leads me to my next point if you're joining a crash course please overindulge in self-revision what do i mean by overindulge in self-revision most of the notes you'll be taking most of the things you'll be seeing will most likely be shown to you two weeks three weeks four weeks maybe to your exam dates and what this means is you have practically how many studying hours in a day let's say five studying hours in a day if you have five studying hours in a day minus the time for the crash course and you multiply that by let's say you read five days a week and you rest on two days so maybe two days in between so five that's already like 25 hours a week of studying now do people study 25 hours in two days yes <laughs> but i'm trying to come up with what your study plan would maybe typically look like or typically you know something it can relate to so now you're studying 25 hours in a week and you're going to multiply that 25 by four weeks that you have till your exams minus again the time for the crash course so that gives you about maybe 25 times so is about 100 hours now if you're studying anything less you most likely maybe start super duper early so you've had a lot of time to look through so much material now if you're studying anything more try i highly advise that you study more than you know this hundred hours in four weeks but then if you are studying more you need to block out revision times what do i mean by blocking out revision times if revision time for you the best time for you to revise what you've already learned is in the mornings then start off your day with revising and then you can learn new things or you can go for the crash courses and then whatever you learn from that you revise it maybe right before you sleep that way you kind of get to go to the through the material twice you know and it gives you a leverage in the sense that most of the crash courses once you go through it once the goal at that point is for you to have an idea of it, you know, or know some of it, not to be excellent, sad, but true. All right. So at your own, how, how, how do I say this? How do I put this? Your own, basically what you're supposed to be doing for yourself is no matter what is pumped, no matter what you learn, you need to go through it. Now, even if you were not in a crash course, you would still need to revise. Maybe you just know as much information or the volume that you'll be revising will be, you know, less. Maybe you'll be revising, instead of revising like eight, five topics, you'll be re revising, say, two or one topic you know those kind of things so those are the things to keep in mind if you were joining a crash course to prepare for the mdcn exams now we've successfully spoken about what to do when you join a crash course what type of crash course or what quality you should be looking out for when you're joining a crash course and when when to join a crash course most of the crash courses literally starts around four weeks you know to the exam dates at least from the tutorials that I've been seeing, even for the new ones, most of them start around four weeks. Now, the next things to keep in mind, crash courses, honestly, I cannot give you a price range. Most of them are as low as 20K or 25K. And it literally goes up from there, okay? So keep an open mind when you are financially planning for these things. And I hope that with these, you are able to look out for the crash course that is perfectly or better suited to you or tailored for you. You know what I mean? Um, again, crash courses are quick fixes or, you know, reminder, refresher courses. Not necessarily. Even the whole tutorial is a refresher course. If you join the tutorial for four months, you're joining a tutorial for three months five months it's still a refresher course it's just in crash courses most of those materials are uh, they're cramped <laughs> okay they're cramped so you want to apart from the fact that you're going to be learning things at a super quicker speed and again think of yourself in all of these things if you're someone who doesn't learn really quickly it's going to be difficult, okay? So you want to make friends with people that learn quickly so they can teach you. And in the process of teaching you, you most likely will remember what this person said, you know, instead of what you read in the book. I don't know. People learn differently. So again, that one is highly subjective and up to you i hope that this video helped you in case you've already joined a crash course in case you're planning on joining a crash course or something along those lines just 
you know, something to keep you in check. And if you're, if you're in a tutorial already and you're thinking, should I still join another crash course? If that tutorial you're in is not addressing your weakness, because most times you're already in a tutorial, you're already learning. And then when you take stock of what you know, that's when you realize, oh, you're, you're weak here. So most of the tutorials you'll join, maybe most likely will be strong in OSCEs and not as strong in maybe MCQs or theoretical knowledge or, you know, refreshing your memory about systems and things like that. So you want to find a crash course that covers that. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. So yes, um, that brings us to the end of today's video. I have made recommendations that are all over my des description box, like the ones that I used. I am not going to be recommending any new tutorials just yet because I would prefer recommending tutorials that I've used or that I've had people that I know personally vouch for, you know, so I can have something to compare it with and know what their work or work ethic or systems or the, just the way they teach. Okay. What it looks like. <laughs> okay. So now that that's out of the way, please guys, if you enjoyed this video, if this video motivated you, if you are preparing for the MDCN exams, you got this. You totally got this. Like, I'm sure you're giving it your best. I'm sure you're pushing really hard and I'm rooting for you genuinely. So yes, doctors, take care of yourselves. Have a blessed, blessed day. Peace and lots of love. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.